morning, everyone. I uh, want to talk a little bit today about the spiritual aspects of Matthew 25. Uh, it's good to be here with all of you today, and I'd like to open with a song today. Psalm 133.1. It's a song of ascents of David. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Physical and spiritual unity. Speaking of physical and spiritual, does Matthew 25 verses 31 through 40 have spiritual meanings as well as physical? Uh, you can turn there if you like. Most of us, if not all of us here, understand that a lot of what Jesus taught has both physical and spiritual applications. And today I wanted to go over some of what I perceive as spiritual applications of Matthew 25, verses 31 through 40. Let's go ahead and turn over there and read what Jesus said to his disciples. Matthew 25, starting in verse 31, we read, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them one from another, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he will set up the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, and feed you, or thirsty, and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger, and take you in, or naked, and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick, or in prison, and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Let's start in verse 31 and 32. In these scriptures, Jesus compares himself to a physical shepherd dividing the sheep from the goats, as he is also referred to as a shepherd in a more spiritual sense in other scriptures. Uh, turn to the book of Zechariah chapter 13. Zechariah 13, here we read a prophecy about the betrayal of Jesus and the scattering of the sheep, i.e. his followers. Starting in verse 7, Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, against the man who is my companion, says the Lord of hosts. Strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. Then I will turn my hand against the little ones. Jesus quotes this scripture also in Matthew 26, referring to himself as the shepherd. And the disciples knew that they were the sheep he referred to in Zechariah. Another reference to Jesus being our shepherd can be found in John chapter 10. John 10, let's read the account of the comparison of the two. John 10, starting in verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Skip down to 14. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And the other sheep which I have, I have which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they will hear my voice. And there will be one flock and one shepherd. So just like in Zechariah and Matthew, these verses in John 10 also refer to the time of Jesus' return. So we know that Jesus will not necessarily be herding literal sheep. And we are to understand that the sheep he is referring to are people, are true Christians. And as Christians, we hear his voice, the Bible, and follow his voice. Referring back to John 10, 4, and when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. In contrast, if the sheep are followers of Christ, then the goats would be all those that have rejected him and his teachings. After the separation is complete, the king, that is Jesus, will say to those, to the sheep, starting in verse 34, 
Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Verse 35 says, For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. Both things needed to sustain physical life. But there's also spiritual food and drink to sustain our spiritual life. And it may be that the king was also speaking of that spiritual food and drink. We're told in God's Word to help those in need of food. Only a few quotes. Uh, I'll quote a few scriptures regarding the sharing of physical food. And that's Luke 3, verses 9 through 11, starting in verse 9. This is John the Baptist speaking. And even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees, Therefore, every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So the people asked him, saying, What shall we do then? And he answered and said to them, He who has two tunics, let him give one who has none. And he who has food, let him do likewise. In 1 Corinthians 3, verse 13, And though I bestow all of my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. So now I'd like to share and state some examples of the giving of spiritual food and drink. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, starting verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud, all passed through the sea, all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For the drink of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Hebrews chapter 5, verses 4 through 12, 12 through 14. Hebrews 5. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are full age, and that is, those by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Paul here is referring to the oracles or the message of God as solid food and milk, spiritual food and drink. So John chapter 6 Verses 27 through 30 and 35. John 6, verse 27. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you, because God the Father has set his seal on him. Verse 35. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. So we see here the spiritual aspects of giving food and drink. Jesus is both the bread of life, our food, and the fountain of the rock of living waters, our drink. Man shall not live by bread alone, or physical food, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. We read that in Matthew 4, verse 4. To give someone spiritual food and drink, is to teach them God's way of life, the truth of God's Word, and the obedience to His commandments. I was a stranger and you took me in. What does it mean to spiritually take in a stranger? Took me in, in the Greek, took, or as Strong's word, G4863. Sunago, it means to lead together, that is, collect or convene specifically to entertain or hospitably, accompany, assemble yourselves together, bestow, come together or gather, lead into, resort or take in. Stranger is Strong's word G3581. is xenos, apparently a primary word, foreign by implication a guest or vice versa, an entertainer. 
a host or a stranger. But Jesus said, as you go, preach. The king saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. That's Matthew chapter 10, verses 7 and 8. He did not say to stop giving after he was executed. To the contrary, Jesus taught in Matthew 28. Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, strangers, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So when you allow a guest, or maybe someone outside the church who is being called into the church, to gather with you and to share and discuss the true gospel of the kingdom and the love of Christ, and not just to give someone a physical place to stay, then you have spiritually taken in that stranger. Verse 36, I was naked and you clothed me. This verse can be considered a physical act of covering one's naked body, as mentioned in the books of Ezekiel and Genesis. Ezekiel 18, verse 5, we read, But if a man is just and does what is lawful and right, if he has not oppressed anyone but has restored to the debtor his pledge, has robbed no one by violence, but has given his bread to the hungry and covered the naked with clothing, if he has walked in my statutes and kept my judgments faithfully, he is just, he shall surely live, says the Lord God. In Genesis 3, verse 21, it states, Also for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. He covered them. The shame of their nakedness came as a result of sin, and the shedding of blood was necessary to make the tunics to cover their physical naked bodies. Just like the shedding of Jesus' blood was necessary to cover our sins, our spiritual nakedness. So while there was a physical need of covering, this also represents a spiritual need of a covering. These coverings are, are an example for us to follow. Not that we must shed blood, but to love and to forgive the sins and trespasses of others against us. As it says in 1 Peter 4, 8, And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. I was sick, and you visited me. Here, the, the word sick in Greek is asthen, asthenel, meaning to be feeble, to be diseased, to be made weak. In 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 11, in God's Word translation, it states, Therefore, encourage each other and strengthen one another as you are doing. In Luke 22, Jesus is talking to Peter, verses 31 and 32. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Also in Hebrews chapter 12, we read, Therefore strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be dislocated, but rather be healed. Have you went to help or assist someone who was physically sick or weak? What about your brethren who are struggling spiritually? When we encourage and edify and strengthen one another, we are fulfilling the words of the king, I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Galatians 3 verse 22, we read, But the scripture was confined all under sin that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to who believe. Confined all. Hebrews 13, starting in verse 1, we read, Let brotherly love continue. Do not forget to entertain strangers, for by doing so, some have unwittingly entertained angels. 
Remember the prisoners as if chained with them, those who are mistreated, since you yourselves are in the body also. If we are obedient to God's word and fulfill Paul's commands in Hebrews 13, then it can be said of us, I was in prison and you came to me. So as we continue on our journey, let's remember to listen and obey our shepherd and savior, Jesus Christ, who continually and continually seek first the kingdom of God and to let love be our motivation. Thank you. This is Chad Brandon with the Continuing Church of God.